I want to have a quick conversation with you about how to opt out of a pre-screen credit card offers. This is an important element because if you feel like you have been bombarded with uh, credit card offers all the time, it's really uh, possible to actually opt out of pre-screen credit card offers. So here are the basics I want you to really pay attention to. So when we talk about uh, pre-screen uh, credit card offers, we are speaking about you being uh, on a list and uh, you being a uh, send uh, occasional marketing campaigns. Okay. And so pre-screen offers work by using credit information furnished by credit bureaus such as TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian to extend credit or insurance products to qualifying per, uh, consumers, right? So it's very important. So when we talk about pre-screen credit card offers, we are speaking about credit card, but also in some cases, insurance products, okay? And the thing is that uh, under the FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, financial institutions such as... Uh, Credit card companies, lenders, and insurance companies can use actually a consumer consumer reports to make firm offers of credit or insurance unless someone has opted out of being included on pre-screen list, right? So there is a possibility actually to to uh, actually control the whole uh, the whole process. And creditors and insurance companies use this reports to offer products with lower annual uh, APRs, if you will, annual percentage rates. The consumers with higher credit scores and they they basically go after those consumers who have a uh, good or excellent credit scores and so creditors actually create an, an eligibility criterion for their offer and they share uh, this criterion with credit bureaus for consumer screening okay that's that's an important so you know you have this sort of uh, filtering that is done at a very high level and what happens here is that a list of qualified consumers is then generated and creditors actually pre prepare uh, offers for the for this identified consumers. And again, we are speaking about folks who have a excellent or good credit score. So if you have a bad credit or fair credit, chances are you will never actually be included in those uh, pre-screen credit card credit card offers. Even though there are cases where you actually go into uh, receive, you may receive offers from uh, those uh, subprime uh, subprime lenders, okay, or credit card providers because. There is a, an entire category of uh, lenders that actually cater to the subprime market. Let me talk to you now about how to uh, opt out of uh, firm credit offers. There are ways to actually opt out and uh, the pre-screen opt out notice rule gives consumers the right to opt out of pre-screen credit card or insurance offers. But the thing is that you have uh, a lot of uh, protocols to follow. Okay. And uh, they have something called the optoutprescreen.com. This is basically a site that is that is managed by credit reporting companies. We we have actually covered this on a, on a previous show, but the thing is that you have to go to that website and uh, follow through. And one reason to opt out of this offers is to actually uh, stop the unsolicited mail, right? So be besides crowding your mailbox, prescreen offers waste paper and resources. And you just do, do not want to get into uh, like be a victim of scam also. And uh, it's important to understand that scammers can rifle through your mailbox to find pre-screen offers. And they then use efficient schemes or dark web marketplaces to obtain your, your personally identifiable information, your PII, to clear the approval process. So it's one of those things where you have to really uh, be comfortable to make sure that you are protecting yourself. Not just for yourself, not just yourself, but also your family. So when we talk about ways to opt out of uh, firm credit offers, you have two strategies. You have uh, what they call the five-year opt-out, and then they have the permanent opt-out. So for for the five-year opt-out, you want to actually uh, visit optoutprescreen.com, and you just uh, or you can call the, th the toll-free number one triple eight five opt-out, and really just follow the the prompts. Pretty straightforward. So you have the five-year opt-out, and you also have the permanent opt-out, and everything happens again on the same website, opt-outprescreen.com, and you just have to follow the prompts and uh, choose the permanent opt-out by mail option. Now, the permanent opt-out happens only by mail because you have to confirm that it's actually you who want to uh, get out of uh, this whole shenanigans. Okay, you want to be at peace. And neither form requires you to submit your social security number or date of birth. So limiting what you share 
decreases any chances of uh, your information ending up in the wrong the wrong hands in the first place. I want to talk to you about uh, opting out of offers from companies that do not use credit bureau lists because uh, there is a possibility also that your data has been flowing around is has been floating around in uh, in the credit universe, if you will. And so you got to really also opt out of uh, out of a certain pre screen offers. Now, after you have opted out, data sharing with affiliates can still happen even if you're no longer a customer, right? Chase customers can limit sharing by calling one 868 8618 And Bank of America customers can limit sharing by calling one 341 5000 Now, it's important to understand that uh, banks may not share data directly with fraudsters. That's for sure. I mean, this is, to this is totally uh, logical, but that information can be leaked or sold to malicious data brokers who may actually upload your data to the dark web. The bottom, the bottom line here is that you have to actually protect all the all, all the different facets of your data. And uh, what happens here is that thieves use uh, the list that they bought on the, on the dark web to place spam calls posing as a credit national uh, assist hotline, convincing victims to give up their personal information. And from there, they just uh, spritz victims with fake order, uh, fake offers, or spoof their identities. So it's one of those things where. You have to see what works for you. And it's important to understand that you may not be able to fully remove your uh, personal information from the Internet. It's just what it is. It, uh, we are, uh, you know, in the 21st century. So you have the Internet is uh, everywhere. But you can minimize, actually, the direct marketing offers you get by contacting the Direct Marketing Association, by adding yourself to the National Do Not Call Registry, by manually re removing your information from data broker sites, and uh, by actually uh, signing up to a to a company, I mean, signing up for a service called Catalog Choice. And what happens here is that you are able to stop junk mail, but you need to actually create an online account on Catalog, catalog Choice and then select which catalogs and types of mail you want to eliminate. So it really, you can see that it takes a little bit of uh, effort. So when we talk about opting out of a pre-screen credit card offers, it's important to understand that th there is a, a flip side to the whole equation. Pre-screen offers can help in certain uh, in certain cases because when you really think about it, pre-screen credit card offers and even insurance offers for that matter are not all bad because they actually expose you to uh, new products and uh, depending on your credit worthiness, you may get better interest and, and approval rates than uh, the general public. And even you don't have, even if you don't have a stellar credit, you can still qualify. And plus, issuers only run a soft inquiry on your credit for a pre-screen offer, which doesn't really, that doesn't really uh, affect your credit score in a big way. I mean, in in a negative way. So if you've already opted out but don't but want to opt back in, you just want to visit the same website I, I told you a little earlier, right? Optoutprescreen.com. So there is a possibility to actually uh, add yourself back to the uh, to the database. And it's important to understand that creditors create eligibility criteria for their offers. So they, they can say, you know what, we want somebody who is a, who has a FICO score of 700 or who, who is working, who is making maybe, a, who knows, a $4,000 or $5,000 every month or whatever. So and uh, so they take uh, creditors take on many forms, auto lenders, mortgage lenders, credit card companies or insurance company or insurance agencies. Each creditor has its own set of factors that determine whether uh, you are a good fit for their offers. So where you live, your income level, and your credit worthiness are usually among the, the first layers of criteria. So we are speaking here about what? Demographics, geography, those are important elements. And also uh, in some cases, the chronology, the timing. And credit scores are also a standard indicator of credit worthiness because they consider your length of credit history and your ability to make uh, on-time uh, payments. So that's really a, a good indicator for lenders. And so those lenders, after they actually, uh, let's say uh, they establish the criteria, they share those criteria with the credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And so, the, and they're just asking them to uh, filter, let's say, uh, their database to see uh, who qualifies. And, and this is how they actually come up with a, a list of uh, qualified uh, 
customers that they actually uh, sent with this show to uh, the uh, to the lender. And see, the thing is that so once the creditors actually get the data from uh, the credit bureaus, they start actually, uh, you know, sending out marketing campaigns. So when we talk about opting out of pre screen credit card offers, we're all speaking about you actually removing yourself from a list that it that was already pre populated. OK, and the thing is that when we talk about pre screen offers, it's not just a letter. I mean, sometimes the, le the lenders might actually call you. They can call you and just uh, or even, they can even text you. They can send you. I mean, nowadays they're just texting consumers, too. So this is this is what it is. And what happens here is that qualified consumers receive uh, the pre screen offers. And so they, they have the ability to actually uh, look at it, just like analyze it. But just remember that once you actually agree to uh, to a pre-screen credit card offer or insurance offer for that matter, the lender is going to go a little more granular on your profile. In other words, they will ask you for your debt to income ratio. They'll ask you for your credit mix. They'll ask you for other instances of your name appearing in public records. And uh, sometimes they might ask for a history of bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcy or default. Because remember, the lender, what they care about, they want to extend to you a credit product, but they just want to make sure that they are actually paid, right? Because because the last thing you want is to actually get a get a credit card offer and not be able to uh, to to repay that offer. So lenders are really really uh, sort of uh, wor worried about that. So they they want to pay attention to your financials. And one thing I want to say that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you live at. Okay. Of course, if you live in a, in a quote unquote, uh, in a sensitive neighborhood, this could be a problem, but they, they pay attention to, to the zip code also. But long story short, your situation, your finances, in other words, your job, your, uh, your family situation, by the way, if you're married versus, uh, versus you're single, because this will affect your expense level. And so all, all these things will be factored into the final analysis. So simply because you or you were pre-screened in a credit card offer doesn't mean that you got the uh, the offer. It, it it just still has to go through the uh, the normal uh, underwriting process before approval. So when we talk about opting out of pre-screened credit card offers, remember that you're trying first of all to protect your credit score, right? But one thing I, I want to reassure you that. Uh, a pre-screened credit card offer is not affecting your credit score. Okay, your credit score is safe because because uh, even if they had to uh, pull up, pull your credit, they're doing a soft pull. So this is kind of this is what it is. And uh, so although soft inquiries can stay on your credit reports for up for up to two years, they are only visible to you. When lenders pull your credit report, they will not see any soft inquiries. So if you were to go to uh, annualcreditreport.com, you you can see the soft pulls on your credit. But this is only uh, this is visible only to you, and uh, it's 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 important to understand that you want to pay attention to uh, your family members also. So if you have children, if you have uh, relatives, let's say you have uh, your 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 great uncle or your, your your dad or your mom or your granddad or your grandma, if they live with you, there is a, there is a way for you to actually protect them because the last thing you want is to actually um, you know opting out of pre screen credit card offers but not actually having your child. Your underage child, your underage child, or your parents, you don't actually opt them out as well. You have to opt them out as well. Now, for adults, things are a lot more, a lot easier. But for uh, for uh, for children, you gotta really go through a certain specific uh, process. Okay, what you want to do here is that uh, you have to send a you have to send in a written request to all three major credit bureaus to actually opt your child out of pre screen offers. And in your request, you want to include a letter explaining how and when the identity theft happened, as well as any fraudulent charges made. And you want to talk about your identity theft report, a copy of your child's birth certificate, a copy of your child's social security card, and a copy of your driver's license or passports. So you got to really uh, provide as much information to the uh, credit bureaus as possible. And uh, so we are going to put this on the screen here where you have to mail your request to. So Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. For Experian, it's P.O. Box 90, 9532, Allen, Texas 75013. 
we'll put this on the screen okay Experian PO Box 9532 Allen Texas 75013 for Equifax it's PO Box 740256 Atlanta Georgia 30374 for uh, TransUnion you have uh, PO Box 505 Woodland Pennsylvania 190940505 so you have a lot of a lot of possibilities there but you have to actually uh, provide you have to send a letter to so all three credit bureaus at the same time so when we talk about the uh, opting out of, of a pre-screen credit card offer there are moments when uh, your pre-screen offer can be denied actually because uh, issuers are not required to grant credit or insurance offers. So uh, when we talk about having a pre-screen offer, the, the pre-screen offer can be denied, not a problem. They may decline their original offer for for several reasons, and it's all about you you making sure that you're comfortable with uh, whatever you are, you are working on at this very moment, right? And uh, what I want to say here is that uh, they they probably have a, a list of criteria. And they're just making sure that, you know, the criteria that they have match what you currently have. Because remember, before they actually extend to you a credit offer, they just they, they just took a look at your your credit but from a soft pool perspective. It wasn't a hard pool. It was never a hard pool. It was a soft pool. So they actually based their decision, their preliminary decisions based on what they saw. And if, if later on, if the, if they were approved, if if the review or deep, deeper review, they realize that hey, listen, you know, maybe they probably look at your pay stubs, they look at your bank statements, they look at your your financial statements, they look at your tax returns, they look at your uh, they look at if they realize that the situation is not as rosy as they thought they they, they would as they thought they will be, you know, they will see it with you, they can deny it, not a problem, okay. And it's important to understand that. If you want to actually uh, get pre-approved for pre-qualified offers, you just have to actually constantly stabilize your financial statements, right? You want to look at your cash inflows and cash outflows. You want to you want to make sure that you are taking care of your family in terms of uh, the kind of credit cards that you have. If you have a let's say you have a child who is an authorized user on a credit card, you want to make sure that uh, they are following proper discipline, proper financial uh, discipline when it comes to uh, car usage. So this will help you a lot. And one thing I want to say here is that it's important to understand that if you want to opt out, of, if you want to opt out of a pre-screen credit card offer, you have to actually uh, take action right away, be proactive and follow through. You can't just uh, send letters to uh, the three credit bureaus and expect that they will, they will actually uh, will do things uh, right away. You have to stay on top of everything make sure that they are doing exactly what you told them to do. So here's the bottom line. To this conversation, I spoke to you about how to opt out of pre-screen credit card offers. I gave you the basics and now the bottom line. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.